Welcome to another edition of Tanuki Productions Life in Japan. My name is Marcus Springer. On March 11, 2011, Eastern Japan was struck by an enormous earthquake, followed by a devastating tsunami and a nuclear accident. While earthquakes frequent Japan, the region was caught off guard by the magnitude of the triple disaster. It caused people across Japan to wonder if the same event would happen in their regions. For the Tokai region, which includes Shizuoka and Aichi prefectures, it was never a question of if it would happen. It was a question of when. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Japanese scientists recognized a pattern of major earthquakes that occurred in this region. Based on the patterns, they predicted that a megaquake between an 8.0 and a 9.0 was due to hit soon with, with an epicenter around the Omaizaki region, where the Hamaoka nuclear power plant sits. Furthermore, the quake would be quickly followed by a tsunami, and then, perhaps a month or two later, the eruption of Mount Fuji. Based on this information, Shizuoka Prefecture beefed up its earthquake resistance codes for new construction. It also invested in research for the possibility of earthquake prediction, and it invested furthermore into reinforcing current structures such as schools and public service buildings. Meanwhile, they also began training the local citizens on how to be first responders to the disaster in their respective neighborhoods. Until 2011, officials and scientists believed that this was a worst case scenario and that the death toll could be kept below 10,000 people. A handful of activists complained about previous safety violations and future earthquake risks at the Hamoka nuclear power plant. They were largely ignored and brushed off as rabble rousers. On March 11th, their fears were not only validated, but accepted as understated by many. In the wake of the disaster, the Japanese Prime Minister requested the power plant be shut down, and scientists went back to work on evaluating what a new worst-case scenario would be, given the reality up in the East. The early results elicited images of Armageddon. Rather than a single quake, scientists said it is now possible to have a triple quake. The Tokai, the Tononkai, and the Nankai earthquakes could rupture simultaneously. As a result, the triple quake would cause a tsunami from 1 to 10 stories in height to strike the Pacific coast of Japan. At the Hamaoka nuclear power plant, where previous predictions were about a 4 meter tsunami, they now estimate 16 to 20 meters in height, or about a 4 to 5 story building. The tsunami will hit ground within minutes, giving citizens very little time to escape. High-speed rail and the old Tomei Highway, the main arteries for transportation in the case of emergencies, rescue, and recovery, will be swamped. Mount Fuji, which is now showing signs of extreme pressure, will most likely erupt within 30 to 45 days, and it will shower the region with ashes all the way to Tokyo. The death toll, which we were hoping to keep below 10,000, is now estimated to be over 300,000 if the earthquakes strike during the winter in the middle of the night. The possible devastation is mind-boggling for such an advanced country as Japan. However, there is hope that earlier predictions are not only reasonable, but likely. The people of the region have been training for 30 years on how to handle this disaster. Scientists have placed highly sensitive machinery throughout the region to detect subtle hints of possible quakes. The government has set up an early notification system to warn people of the quake should it be occurring. Granted, it is impossible to predict an earthquake. This technology may give citizens two or three seconds to find a safer place to hide in the case of the quake. There is no place in the world better prepared for such a disaster than Shizuoka Prefecture. 
Join us again as we take a closer look at the Tokai earthquake and the preparation for the quake, the tsunami, and Mount Fuji's eruption. We will also investigate the controversial nuclear power plant, its safety, and its stakeholders, from the government, to the people, to the local industry, and the possibility of the Japanese Mafia. The Mafia not only has managed to work themselves into the daily functions of the nuclear power industry, but they also have numerous connections to the politics and to the local business. Until then, goodbye.